In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we gather this morning, this 15th Sunday of Ordinary Time, and we hear the story of the disciples being sent, being turned into apostles and sent forth uh, to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. And so we are reminded that like them, we are sent forth. We're not always ready. We're not always prepared. And so as we enter into this Eucharist, let us first take a moment and call to mind our sins, our failings, our shortcomings, all those ways in which we fail to live uh, into the grace and the call that Christ has placed in our hearts and trusting in his love and mercy, prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Kyrie eleison. You came to call sinners Christ eleison. Christ eleison. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of
Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, priest of Bethel, said to Amos, off with you, visionary. Flee to the land of Judah. There earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesy in Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and a royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets, I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, go, prophesy to my people, Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, and in accord with the favor of his will, of his will, for the praise and the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions, in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times to sum up all things in Christ, in heaven and on earth. In him, we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will, so that we might exist for the praise of his glory, we who first hoped in Christ. In him, you also who have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, which is the, the first installment of our inheritance toward redemption as God's possession to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Have you ever felt 
utterly unprepared for a task. I'm guessing a few parents and grandparents might be thinking of their first pregnancy at this point. Others might be thinking of a new job. I remember still quite distinctly the first time I responded to a code blue as a chaplain intern, feeling utterly ill-equipped and unprepared for what I was being asked to do. Or I remember the first time I preached at a gathering mostly made up of missionaries, other missionaries of the precious blood. The way in which I felt utterly ill-prepared or unprepared for the task. I imagine that's what those first, those 12 apostles felt as the Lord began to send them out two by two. We're only in chapter six of Mark's gospel, so they still have a, a lot of growing and learning to do. They had been with Jesus for a while, but I'm sure that as he sent them out, he wondered, what? You, you want us to do what? And yet he sent them out. He sent them out to preach repentance, to cast out demons, to anoint and cure the sick. These 12 simple fishermen and craftsmen who had not studied to be rabbis, they had no seminary training, they hadn't studied theology. They had spent a year maybe, maybe a year and a half with Jesus. And so they were sent with their own personal experience of Jesus as the authority to do the things he sent them to do. Some would say he sent them out with little preparation. And I think he did that on purpose so that they would know that the preparation came from him. The gifts came from him. Because they could easily have said like Amos, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. Amos was not a prophet before the Lord called him. And the 12, as the Lord began to send them out, were not yet priests or apostles. God had simply called them and made them what they were. And that's the point. Their authority to preach repentance, to cast out evil, to anoint and cure the sick, to proclaim the good news of God's grace, came from their experience of God. And our authority to do the same thing comes from our experience of God. I look out on this assembly and I see lots of young people, young men and young women, a few of whom I'm sure are called to the priesthood and religious life, others who are called to the married life, and a few who might be called to a life of consecrated singleness. But all of us, everyone gathered in the church this morning, are called to be faithful witnesses to Jesus Christ. God has called each one of us right where we are, right now, to be his faithful witness. God has made each one of us exactly as we are and placed us exactly where we are to be his voice, to proclaim his love and mercy to a world that is in desperate need of healing and even more desperate need of grace. God has placed each of us exactly where he wants us to be his messengers. Because you see, brothers and sisters, we have heard the word of truth. We have come to know Jesus Christ. We have come to know that we've been saved by his sacrifice. We have been washed in his blood. But that word is not just for us. You see, it is by grace 
It is by the grace of God that we have been saved. It is by the grace of God that we have been cleansed by the precious blood of Jesus. And it is by the same grace of God that we are sent by his blood, each of us, to share in the mission of Jesus Christ. Each and every one of us are called right where we are to share the good news of Jesus with the world. As parents, helping our children to know Jesus Christ and to grow in grace. As co-workers, being a witness to a life of grace. And as friends, being a patient, loving presence who helps others to know Jesus. Each of us is called to witness, to preach repentance, to conquer evil, to bring healing, to share Jesus and the good news of his reign with the world. A daunting task, to be sure. Some might say an overwhelming task, and that's why we come here. We come and gather around this altar, the font of grace, to experience Christ and his sacrifice anew, to be plunged into the precious blood of Jesus, nourished and fed by the sacrament, so that we can go out and share Christ with others. We come not just to receive, but to carry him out into the world. We come so that we can take Christ with us. Because you see, that is our call. That is our mission, to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, who carry his love, mercy, healing, and forgiveness into every corner of the world. Together we profess our faith saying, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, unsubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came out from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and it is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting that God will provide all that we need to do his will, let us bring our concerns before him. For the church, may the Lord guide and strengthen our leaders as they share the good news through their words and service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For first responders, May they have the protection of St. Michael as they serve, protect, and heal. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer from any form of addiction, may the Holy Spirit guide them on a path of recovery and give them strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the youth in this faith community, may they grow ever deeper in their faith and desire for the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the poor souls in purgatory, especially those who have no one else to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of Becky Jones, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the evil of pornography and human trafficking, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, those written in our book of St. Monica, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, receive our petitions and grant all that is pleasing to you. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Operatory hymn may be found in the green hymnal, number 382, Lord, you give the Great Commission.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all the Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy. For you are the one God living in true existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them, we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when, through disobedience, he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe so that, bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant, Francis, our Pope, Dennis, our bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be
on the swallow a nest for her brood. She lays her young by her altars, Lord of hosts, my King and my God. My heart sings with joy.
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. There are a few announcements. There are two opportunities for adult faith formation being offered this summer here at Emmanuel. The first is entitled Strike the Fire, a four-part series to help you identify and learn about your spiritual gifts and how to use them to share the good news of Christ with others. The second opportunity is a summer book study group um, being offered as part of the series Being Catholic in an Unbelieving World. You will find more information about each of these programs in today's bulletin, and there are also handout sheets in the back of church. The group Biking for Babies will be making a stop here at Emmanuel Church on m tomorrow, Monday evening. This organization is a pro-life group raising awareness for pregnancy resource centers. A meal with the 16 cyclists who are riding from Columbus to St. Louis will be offered at 6 p.m. in the church basement. Please RSVP through the parish office by Monday afternoon if you wish to be at the meal. Vacation Bible School will be offered the week of July 19th. Please register your children today using the forms in the back of the church or on the parish website. And we are still accepting teen and adult volunteers to work with the Youth Encounter Service or YES Retreat on July 30th and 31st. Registration forms are on the parish website and in the back of the church. The more hands we have, the more help we can offer to our senior parishioners. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn in the green hymnal, number 479, Go Make of All Disciples.